You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks, to the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, and I'll tell you what, we're right into this campaign. Let's get right down right down to business here. You know my guests. You've seen her. You've seen her in Oregon. You've seen her at, uh, at her various uh, appearances, appearances at, her own, at her own shows, if you will. She's on YouTube. I mean, she is the definer when it comes to race talk. She is the person. I tell you, she's been doing this business how long? No, we're no. in our sixth year sixth year wow the sixth year it's been awesome my last one and i've got the brochure you notice i'm just going right down to the meat of the matter here the last the last session that she had that i went to was let me see where am i donna there they are right there it was on july the 12th what does it mean to be white in america boy wow what an appropriate statement with the situation that we're having in the campaign now for for president of these united states and as I said uh, in the show when I, when I was with, with Scott, I said, we're basically having a rev revolution right now. It's a revolution when you think about the historical standpoint of this country. They had the revolution. That was the mother country aspect of it. Everybody got together with their differences and whatever. And then all of a sudden they got together. They worked together. And all of a sudden we had America. And then all of a sudden there were some changes. It was called race problems. Uh, president Lincoln ran for, for president, right? Lincoln ran for, Lincoln ran for president of the United States. And then, the, uh, i.e., and they basically said it was all because of black and the white aspect of it, the north and the south aspect of it. And they were actually having race talk then, where they had a sort of agreed. They broke away. So the next thing you know, uh, all of a sudden, the man gets, uh, well, it was the United States and the Confederacy aspect of it. And all of a sudden, he, he's not with us anymore. And I think had he lived, we wouldn't be sitting up here talking right now. We'd be enjoying somewhere in there or some, whatever. You know, but the bottom line is that we've got a problem. We got an issue. So now we've got a we got a major major issue right now uh, here. We got a presidential election, and it's kind of like right where we are again. We can either have another civil war, or we can solve this problem and be Americans across the board. And that's why I've invited you, because in all due respect, you have been talking about these issues across the board for the last six years. Well, I mean, probably more if like not the more last than that. sixty-five. Sixty-five. So fair. <laughs> I hope I've introduced you enough. Then you can explain. You, you didn't tell him who I was. Oh yes, I did. You I said say, Donna, Donna Maxie. No, you didn't. I don't know. But that's okay. <laughs> they got you propped out. Okay, Donna, share us a little bit. Why did you put this race talk piece together? I'm a retired educator, okay. and at the time I was a teacher in Portland Public Schools. Uh, we were doing the program, um, uh, courageous conversations about race. And the whole idea was to start talking about race. And I saw some people who were, how you say, objectionable people mm -hmm. who got it. Mm -hmm. People who, who were not always kind to other people, but they understood, they were able to take another perspective and look at this and understand from another point of view that was not necessarily their own point of view about the issue. And I thought, this is great, except we need to have it in the public, away from people's paychecks. Because if you connect it to people's paychecks, I'm going to say what you need me to say, mm -hmm. because my paycheck is connected. Mm -hmm. Now, when it's out there, and it's in the public, and it's anonymous, then I'll be more real to my, my true feelings about the issue. So um, I started it with, um, with the help of Uniting to Understand Racism and McMinimins. Kennedy School, and so we we started having these discussions. Uh, we've had some amazing topics. 
Um, like? We've talked about, the first year was about race in Oregon, what it was like to be a per African American in Oregon, what it was like to be an Asian in Oregon, what it was like to be um, Latino in Oregon. We went through a number of different ethnic groups. Uh, we, tied, we tied all the Asian people together. My favorite line from that particular um, time was Polo Catalani said, you know, we, we weren't Asians before we came to this country. We didn't know we were Asian until we came here. Before we were Filipino, mm -hmm. Indian, mm -hmm. Thai, mm -hmm. Lao. Mm -hmm. They were from all different countries. They were not a homogenous group mm -hmm. of people and expected to have a monolithic point of view. Just as white people are not monolithic, nor are African Americans, nor are Latinos. Mm -hmm. So um, everyone has their own point of view and everyone has to be heard. And um, just as your previous guest talked about the Johnson Weld ticket, mm -hmm. there's also Trump's ticket mm -hmm. and also Clinton's Clinton, ticket. Yes, right. So there are different points of view. Mm -hmm. Now, all of those people are white, but yeah. they don't all agree on everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. clearly, they're not a monolith and mm -hmm. nor are communities of color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just jump right up into it. I mean, we, we, let's say we got this election on at this point in time. Now it's sort of like a black and white issue with the shootings and this, that, and the other. How, how do you respond to, to race, uh, some of the stuff that you've been doing to, to this era that we're dealing with right now? Because we got a heck of a, we got a, heck of a race here for, for president. And at the end of the day, it's going to be a... Race is the smoke screen. Yes, go on. Race okay. is the smoke screen. Race was the smoke screen when the Civil War occurred. Mm -hmm. Because the Civil War wasn't about black people. Right. The Civil War was about money. And it was about the South was going to lose their commanding lead in the, um, in the industrial world because they had free labor. The I thought they, they had cotton gins. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Northern states no were... Um, were upset and angry because right. they had to pay for their labor. Um, and so there was an unfair advantage there. Your previous uh, guest spoke about um, a, a tax across the board, and that's really great if everybody pays taxes on every dollar that comes in in their name. Mm -hmm. But when you have taxes, when, when you, are, you have a company that purchases your car, then you don't have to pay for that. Poor people pay for every dollar. They ta are taxed on every dollar that they earn. Mm -hmm. People who are wealthy have different places to pay, place that money so it doesn't come directly in their name. Mm -hmm. It's all very interesting, and, and it's always been about money and power. Yeah, money. And that's what it is about now, money mm -hmm. and power. Racism, sexism, ableism, these are all ways to identify who are the people in mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. And the people in power are always looking for ways to eliminate competition for goods and services. Mm -hmm. So you eliminate your competition for goods and services, and then those are the people who get to work together mm -hmm. to move forward. But let's be real. We don't want everybody to move forward. Mm -hmm. The most duped people in this country are white people. People of color understand that we are not, we are not written into the American dream. Who is duped is poor working class and middle class white people because they're the ones doing the heavy lifting for the for the ten the ninety the ten percent at the top, and especially for the one percent. They're the ones doing all the work. And if I'm holding you down with one hand, mm -hmm. I can't move forward. I can't swim forward with two hands. I can only swim forward with one hand. The wealthy are have no contact with people of color unless they're a, a wealthy person. So the people who are, who are, and I was talking to um, Dr. Preston Moore, Doc, Reverend Dr. Preston Moore. He is a, a, an attorney and a minister, yeah. and he did a presentation at Race Talks called Learning to be White. And my question to him was, why do white people keep voting against their own best interests? Mm -hmm. And the answer was amazing they're voting their aspirations. Hmm. aspirations. They're, they're voting their aspirations. They're not voting for their reality. They're voting for what they aspire to be and the hope that someday they might be able to be up there part of the 10%, part hmm. of the wealthy class. That's why people keep buying tickets for the, um, 
for the, the, the lottery. Of the lottery, the lottery. Yep. You know, they're voting yep. in aspiration. Yep. That they're hoping to get to be that someday, even though the odds are against them. And that money that they're putting into that lottery ticket might be better spent, you know, putting it into savings. Well, where does or the African American fit in that thing? Hey, if I were to ask you, how do they sense when they pick up that lottery ticket? We're 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 voting our aspiration too. We want to be rich. Everybody, you know, Maslow said it. Abraham Maslow has his hierarchy of needs, and I think that that is says it all. Everybody wants the same basic things. Mm. Now, what it looks like to you and to me might be two different things. I mean, maybe you eat, um, you know, I, I always say that every culture has, has some kind of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. um, black people have hot water cornbread. Um, you have Jews have matzah. You have um, crepes. They're all unleavened. Mm -hmm. And they all are basically made from the same ingredients, which is flour, water, salt, maybe a little sugar, and mm -hmm. maybe an egg. Mm -hmm. But they're all basically made from the same thing. And, but they don't look alike. Mm -hmm. So we all want the same things. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. all trying to just live, survive, have a family, take care of ourselves, have enough to eat, have a little leisure, um, be respected, mm -hmm. be respected, and treat it fairly. Mm -hmm. Well, you made mention that when you first started, you said, well, the Civil War was about money. It wasn't about black and white. Right. It was about money. Is it about money today or is it about race? It's about money. It's about money. It's How about so? money. Well, uh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. If you have, in order to have a top, you have to have a bottom. Okay. And someone has to be on the bottom, and it's really, um, I was in a group of women who are all women of color from all different countries around the world, and one of the things that was brought up is that African Americans are seen to be very ignorant, very um, loud, aggressive, all, all these negative mm -hmm, mm -hmm. attributes. And these are, and the question is, and they come here acting, like, you know, the people who come here come here with that point of view. Well, where did they get that point of view? They got that point of view from movies, from videos. They've gotten that point of view from media. They have not met any people <laughs> themselves personally, but they come here with a point of view. And in this country, African Americans are just considered to be the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's one of those things that you, you have to step outside of your comfort zone if what you want to know are the facts. You have to step outside of your comfort zone and get to know who is across from you and who mm -hmm. people are. Mm -hmm. And I always love to say when people have told me, particularly white people have told me, you're different than the rest of them. <laughs> and my answer, my question always is, how many of them do you know? <laughs> so, okay. you know, people are who they are. Mm -hmm. They're in every ethnic group and every nationality. There are people who are positive. There are people who are negative. It just is one of those things that um, you have to get to know people. Okay. Now, do you think, and I'm just getting right into this piece here. Now, we've got the, we've got the president's elections, you know, and we've seen the conventions from the Republicans, the Democrats. We had, we had Hillary Clinton over here on the Democratic side. We had Donald Trump on the Republican side. Not enough on Gary, but he's getting there because I'm going to have him back on, if you will. But do you feel that they're having that discussion that you just shared with me in regards to uh, what the problem is with that divide between, because you know we had these shootings, we had this, we had uh, Black Lives Matter and this, that and the other. Are they having that discussion? Do they understand, do you think? Not really. Okay. I, I think that the discussions, we can, t there are many white people who are upset at the thought that Black Lives Matter. And the reason they're upset is because they want to know why do you have to say Black Lives Matter? Mm -hmm. In this country, it is understood that when you're talking about a man, that what you are talking about is a white man. Mm -hmm. If you are talking about a person of color, then you would say a black man or an Asian man or an mm -hmm. Indian man. You, you preface what that man is. But if you just say a man, it's understood that you're talking about a white person. So white people don't understand that they are taken into consideration always because they are the bottom line. 
they are the norm in this culture. And the discussions are happening. I, I think that people are being upset about Black Lives Matter because they don't understand how black lives have not mattered. There has been so much killing and lynching of African Americans in this country since the beginning of time when we came here. And they used to have lynchings on Sunday afternoons. If you know, you know, people didn't dress up. Mm -hmm. So if you look, go back, they have postcards that show lynchings. Everyone's dressed in their Sunday finest. So mm -hmm. this is Sunday, Sunday entertainment where mm -hmm. they would come and lynch people, mm -hmm. where they would mutilate the body, they would hang the person, they would uh, take the body and break it, you know, put it, set it on fire, mm -hmm. take pieces and sell them. There are all kinds of, uh, there are so many horrible things that have happened to African Americans and poor people in this country mm -hmm. that the average person in this country, African Americans too, do not know about. Mm -hmm. It's something you have to look at. So I, I say that one of the best things that happened to black people in this country was the cell phone camera. Hmm. Because now it is being documented what has been going on for centuries in this country. But for Donna, centuries. But Donna, but check this out. But a number of people will say, well, we've had this black president, Obama, for the last eight years. Haven't mm -hmm. we solved the problem? First of all, Obama is half white, okay. and his father is African. And I, I will never forget, um, someone told me that the assumption about black people in this country is that your ancestors were slaves. Obama's ancestors in these people's minds were not slaves, they were, they were African. Yes, my ancestors were slaves, but so were everybody else's in the world. At some point in time, everybody's been on the bottom of the barrel. Yes. So it is not one of those things where... So he's African. He is African. African. And white. For many people, I, I had white friends who told me, why does he always say he's African? He's yes. black. Yes. And the answer is, white people came up with that rule. One drop of black blood and you're black. Hmm. We didn't come up with that rule. So we're just following along, and he's going along with what has been laid out beforehand. In terms of, of him being president, the president has some power, but the president doesn't have all of the power. If he had all of the power, we would have induced Congress to vote for different things. We would have induced the Supreme Court, and God rest his soul, soul Scalia is gone, we would have induced him to have a different point of view. It's a checks and balances, and the president can only do so much. He does not have a tremendous amount of power. Congress is a major player in everything. The Supreme Court is a major player, just as the president. The pre president is more of a figurehead, and yes, he does have power, but he's the person out front, not with all the power. Um, I. I think that we have made a lot of change in this country, but there's still a lot more change to come. I thought it was quite interesting that um, Kane is now the vice presidential candidate, and he is a Jesuit. Now, I think it's interesting. That's they the mention, Democratic side. That's, that's yes, the, the Democratic yeah. side. They mention he's a Jesuit. What they don't mention is that Jesuits are Catholic. And I remember when John Kennedy ran for president and what an anomaly that was and mm -hmm. how people weren't going to vote for him because he was Catholic. And I remember a former principal of mine telling me that there was a different be difference between Catholics and Protestants. They were two different religions. And I had to point out, wait a minute, mm -hmm. they both believe in Jesus. They both, you know, pray to the same God. They both use the same book. They both believe that Mary is the mother of Jesus and all of these things. So how are these two different religions? They're two different sections or sects of a, of a religion, but they are, not, they are the same religion. And people get confused. We change the rhetoric to go along with our particular point of view. What we have to look at is what is best for all of us. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be the alpha group. There's always going to be 
the Zeta group, for <laughs> lack of a better word. <laughs> yeah. And that's part of what it is. And times change. In another 500,000 years, white people might not be on the top in the United States. The United States might not be a country. We're, pre we're burning out pretty fast on this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I see people saying, God bless America, and America is wonderful. I think the average American has no idea how much America has, the United States has been sold out. Hmm. That foreign entities mm -hmm. own major portions of this country. Hmm. Hmm. Tell me this. We got about five minutes. Spend, let's spend a little and time I need on to talk to you about that too. Oregon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Real quick, like, how do you, why do you feel? What, what do you feel, Oregon? How about Oregon? Where do we fit in this whole issue? Oregon's a very we'll interesting place. You've got the state. You've got the state of Portland. <laughs> <laughs> and you have the rest of the state. Okay. And Portland has always been much more liberal than the rest of the state. And so that's why Oregon is a blue state. If you took Portland and Multnomah County out of the voting, you would have a red state. Mm -hmm. Because the majority of the people in this state are very conservative. I remember as a child wondering why people who were in rural Oregon had southern accents. And it wasn't until later that I found out that a, a majority of the people who are in rural Oregon mm -hmm. came from the South. Wow. So it's Oregon, Portland's a very, um, and, I, and I think very honestly that Portland is more PC, politically correct. Right. Because I don't see people mixing in terms of friendships, in terms of relationships right. here in Portland. I wow. think a lot of people vote according to um, a philosophy as opposed to an actual lifestyle that they conduct. Well, folks, I want you to know we got about four minutes, and I wanted to spend a little bit more time on House Bill 2016, and then I would refer you to her YouTube page. What's, what's your link? Was it just Race Talk, right? It's Race Talk. Race Talk. Okay, Donna Dorsch. Okay, now let's, so let's talk about So just go to YouTube and yeah. type in Race Talk. Just, just, just type uh, in Race House Talk. House Bill 2016 is a bill here in Oregon. Uh, Oregon House Bill 2016, and it was written recently um, and funded by the legislature, and the whole idea is to improve, to decrease recidivism, which means the return to prison okay. of African American, black, and biracial children. Okay. And so Multnomah <laughs> Education School District has been funded and Race Talks is a partner along with Guiding Light Family Services and Savalti Family Services. Okay. We're all partners with Multnomah Education School District coming up with a program and seeing what services we can provide. Wraparound services for elementary going into junior high, junior high going into high school, high school going into college. Mm. And we're working on trying to, it's a one year program we just got the grant was just funded okay. in July, okay. and it starts start school. Well, will you keep us in a vetting mode kind of a deal? I will keep as time you, goes. I will come back and tell me where it is. As to how and it's we, going. we're not going to be talking about two or three kids, right? No, we're talking about every African American, black, biracial child that comes through the, um, the and and. MESD has a school, which is Donald E. Long, okay, right. which is the Juvenile Delinquent right. Center. And so Donald E. Long um, is fed children from Yamhill, McVinville, um, a number of different counties all around. Okay. So the program involves children who are there, and we'll be following those kids and tracking them to make sure that they are successful. And we have um, advocates that will be, each child will have their own advocate that will help the child, the school, the parent, so that and the teachers and we're going to and we're actually going to start from k1 k12 or are you just going to start no it's children who have come through the through. donald lee long center oh, which is the okay. juvenile delinquent okay okay home. i want to make sure it used to be jdh for okay. the old timers okay good we got about a minute and a half any lasting thoughts and then i want you to come back now remember we got to be coming back on this piece okay. well i welcome people to come to race talks i welcome people to get involved in action to put their money where their mouth is mm -hmm. Get involved. Yes. When you know, I went to see Hands Up the other night. It's a play that was at uh, Artist Repertory Theater. It was seven playwrights' version of what it's like to be black in America and how it feels. Good discussion afterwards. We need people to come away from 
events like Race Talk from Hands Up, go out and join a group that are doing some action. Mm -hmm. The group might be the NAACP, it might be the Urban League, it might be Don't Shoot Portland, it might be uh, Black Lives Matter, it doesn't matter. It might be the Latino Connection. Whoever it is, go and join and get involved. That sounds good. Maybe maybe even join the Oregon Voters Digest and come on the show. That's a possibility. Like yourself. Is that okay with you? That's a possibility. That, <laughs> that works. But again, let's re remind them again about your YouTube and how to access you. You got a phone number or anything that you want to share? You can go to YouTube and it's Race Talks. Type in Race Talks and our events will come up. Uh, they, we, they've been televised for the last five years. And we have all different topics. This last one was what it means to be white in America. The next one coming up is a, a panel of women of color talking about Jesse Williams' uh, uh, black education, black entertainment um, station speech. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don, it's always a pleasure. Always. Okay, folks, as you see, check them out. Okay, I'll see you next week with another one. Take care. Have a good one.